Potentially, some of you are asking, what effect does dissociation itself have on the HPA axis and BDNF? Great question. I'm going to answer that according to research that I've just found that I was totally elated to find along these lines. So, somewhere in Texas, Colin Ross, author of the book I mentioned, I think, in one of the last dissociation videos, or maybe both of them, um, which you need to check out. I will try to link to his website. Also try to link to his to his book. Uh, massive amount of research on his on his dense website. So what did I? What's the truth of the matter? What would we expect? We think trauma, long term trauma occurring, um, causing dissociation or contributing to dissociation as a coping mechanism. Of course, the HP axis is going to be thrown off, and of course, the hippocampus in particular is going to take a hit. That was covered in earlier videos on this very channel. So, shrinkage, atrophy, all those horrible words we don't want to say, likely occurring to the hippocampus, right? It's a no-brainer. Thanks for those of you that got that. Uh, what did they find? in Texas. Actually, it turns out they took 20 patients that had experienced trauma, admittedly a small study, but still more has got to be done, that qualified for diagnoses. They were in an inpatient treatment facility, qualified for a diagnosis of either PTSD, complex PTSD, DID, with dissociative features. Compared their brain volume, specifically the hippocampus and the left and right hemisphere, of the brain in addition to the, the total brain volume to normal controls who did not qualify for a diagnosis of PTSD. So they'd had trauma in life as everybody has, but not to the extent that they would qualify for such a diagnosis, right? Compared their brain volume, right? We're thinking, of course, there's atrophy, shrinkage in the, the group that had the, the trauma and the dissociation to that point. Duh, Jen. Nope. Normal brain volume compared to controls. Identical, in fact. What? Huh? They assumed what I would have assumed, which was, oh, wait, I did it wrong. Something's not right. I think I need to do it over. Do over? Turns out they did it right. This uh, result may be, and this is what they started hypothesizing about, it could be that dissociation itself functions neuroprotectively, physiologically neuroprotectively. Okay, so we know on a psychological level it, prote it protects the child who's undergoing the trauma at five. That's why it's happening. It's a coping mechanism. You have a kid whose mom is, is abusing. The kid, fight or flight is off the table, guys. You can't run away from your mom. Okay, you can run around the block to Sammy's house, at which point Sammy's mom is going to call your mom and promptly you're going to get ushered home. And then more abuse is likely to occur because why did you run to Sammy's house? Secondly, you can't really, I mean, you're the smaller player here. It doesn't matter if mom has no mixed martial arts, bat, black belt, blah, 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 blah. Clearly I know a lot about those things. Um, anyways, it doesn't matter. Mom's twice your size, three times your size. She's bigger than you. She's going to take you down. You have no option of fight or flight. So what do you do? You dissociate. Separate off from that part of yourself. Oh, wait, this isn't happening to me. This is happening to some other little girl. It's Mary that this is happening to. And you create this imaginary friend who becomes very real to you. And your experience is that Mary really exists. Because Mary's a part of you that takes the drama. So, and, and then maybe there's Nellie. And then there's uh, Sarah, all sorts of characters that take on various things that you need them to hold for you. And it protects you psychologically. Why? Because you have to survive. You have to remain, even if it's dysfunctionally attached to your caregiver. Okay, occasionally mom makes pancakes and puts food in your mouth. Occasionally, or maybe always, there's a roof over your head. Okay. Five-year-old, you got to survive. Can't go out there and get a job. Can't get out of this scenario. So that's what you do. You dissociate. So it functions psychologically on a protective level. But who would have who thought 
physiologically as well. Because what's likely happening? You're creating this scenario. You're separating off for a part of yourself. You have memories. Yes, there's an amnesia barrier between you and, and these, these other parts that hold it usually. But you also, there's, there's this creation of the memory or the stuff that Mary holds. Mary's a character. So is Nellie. So is Sarah. You have all these characters that hold stuff for you. Guess what? You have to hold and store those memories somewhere in your brain. And this might be what's protecting your hippocampus because you're laying down new tracks. You're creating a story that literally is helping you survive, helping your neurons survive. Increasing your BDNF levels is what I suspect. That was not put in the study and more research obviously needs to be done. But I'm just going with what I know about BDNF and what I know about brain growth and brain repair and brain development and all the stuff that, okay, that I, there's way too much to know. But from having scratched the surface, admittedly, this is what we know. This is likely to be the case. It's neuroprotective physiologically. How freaking awesome is that? And how much does this re underscore once again how our, our beings... I mean, we, we often look at these symptoms as horrible things, but there's another side to that coin. Yes, it's, it's traumatic to be dissociating. Yes, absolutely. And at the same time, it's freaking brilliant. There's a level of brilliance in all of this, in our symptoms themselves, because the, there's an innate healing force that's trying to heal you, that's trying to protect you, that does exist, even in the case of DID and dissociation itself, it is an elaborate and complicated healing system, coping system. And isn't that freaking awesome? We have the capability to do this? Okay. I, I just back up in wonder and awe, and you should too. And thanks for tuning in. And there will be more of this coming at you, but that's, that's the story on dissociation. I'll link to the article. You'll like it. Adio.